So we're in Copenhagen, but we're very close to Sweden. Yes, it and, is. And you can drive to Sweden from Denmark? Yes, we can. See, for me, I always thought that that would involve either a plane or a boat. Before the beach. Oh, there is. Oh, so it, there used to be you could only do a boat or a yes. plane. Yes. Okay, so I'm not completely crazy. Even though I've been flying for perhaps 14 hours of, of moving my body. So, that's not bad. I didn't realize it not going to be in Denmark very long, so that's Denmark behind me. And Sweden. So we've been driving for about an uh, hour and a half through the Swedish countryside. We're getting closer to where we're staying, but it's kind of hard to imagine where exactly we're staying. We are at a hotel quite literally in the middle of nowhere. Howdy, sir. How's it going? I'm good. 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 Jack here is my hey, Jack, glamorous please. assistant. Yeah. Oh. And I'll you take your bag as well. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, feel free to settle in and then we'll, we're just hanging out here. Just to, to raise a glass and say welcome to, welcome to Sweden everyone, it's fantastic to have you here. Uh, fantastic few days to be spending in your company uh, and for us to show you um, how, how we do it at Absolute. Absolute, over there. There it is. We're in the air of Skorna and Skorna is known as the kind of the granary of Sweden. Something that we talk about a lot with Absolute is one source. All of our, every, all of the elements that go into making our vodka really do come from one place. This way. Right now we are in the control room, the heart of the distillery. The capacity here is 50 million liters of fine spirit, that's 96% of ABV. We have 45 people working here in five different shifts and we uh, run this 24-7 all year round. 60% of a bottle, of a vodka bottle, is water. And we don't uh, just take any tap water or drinking water. We dig down 120 meters underneath the ground to pick up the finest water from the nicest aquifers in the world. What we do here is um, treat it in reverse osmosis to get rid of the iron to make it softer before the distillation process. We produce uh, 600,000 liters of absolute every day. And that means that we need 600,000 uh, kilos. That is one kilogram for one liter of absolute. One of the things that's really difficult to kind of communicate is the scale of the uh, grain storage, which is just it's massive. Absolutely massive. The grain is blown through here and after the flour after it's been made, you add water, we add enzymes. The enzymes encourage the uh, the starches to convert to sugars. We boil it for three hours uh, and then we chill it down with the river water. We don't put extra energy, but we take the chilling water from the river, uh, cooling it down to 37 degrees, put it into the fermentation where we add another set of enzymes, natural enzymes, and the natural yeast that we use. It will be or stay for 48 hours and it will be like a good strong beer. So you basically fill up one of those tanks, equivalent of one of those tanks with spirit every day. Yeah. That's how much yeah. you produce. Yeah. It's mind boggling, the, the, uh, the, the scale that is being produced on here. The amount of energy required to make a 50 milliliter uh, measure of absolute vodka is the same that it would take to boil the kettle to make a cup of tea. And we're still not satisfied because we still have goals to be even better. Can you explain uh, that word, that phrase that I can't pronounce? Again? Una did dra. It's un, uh, unnecessarily good. We do everything a little bit better than it's than necessary. And we aim for perfection. That's it. It shouldn't be otherwise than perfect. It still is that in one. So there's a, a mash column and a raw spirit column. At the end of that then you have the raw spirit ready and then it goes through to the rectification columns which passes through another four columns so yeah there's a methanol methanol column and extraction column why is it called absolute the name um absolute it <laughs> comes from uh, from a swedish um phrase absolute rent brandon uh, which means absolutely pure vodka it comes back from the, the, the founder the smith the guy on the medallion yeah, because he was the one introducing uh, continuous distillation to Sweden uh, in the 1800s. Uh, so 1879, he launched uh, the trademark of Absolute that he had brand in. So 100 years later, 1979, we introduced Absolute, like an Absolute vodka. But there's no, there's no filtration. The, the, the single pass filtration happens here. The only filtration is, is a mesh filtration. 
um, so cellulose, yeah. and that's really just to control any particles, hard particles which might have made its way from the through the distillation process. So there's no charcoal filtration that's happening. It's just this mesh filtration but that happens at the point uh, at the bottling line. Three hundred thousand bottles in an order to go to US. Bottle to make sure they are uh, free from scratches, the bottom and the, the neck. And then we will check manually for any default. This is really impressive, but then you turn around and you realize it's also over here. Moving, so that end of production doesn't have to stop. So you just shut off the section and then it catches up. And let's just turn it back on. And here's your catch. watching absolute tv how much standard absolute is bottled versus all the other flavors and stuff 80 percent is the absolute original and then the largest flavor is the absolute citron uh, which is eight percent and then the rest goes for the rest million about 13 million bottles um, and if we don't fill it up in three weeks three four weeks this would be empty in meters this is 22 meters uh, wide 11 storage high and this part is 170 meters and then how high is it um, 11 stores high so uh, nine meters I don't actually know This space that we're in specifically now is the clubhouse, uh, which says, we, as you can see, there is a bar in here. Uh, and this is a space which Kip has very kindly allowed us to, uh, to use as a space for a bit of hanging out, a bit of education, um, and a bit of fun. When you're doing a comparative tasting in any category, uh, whether or, or even outside of spirits, uh, it's not about what's best. I think it's about you know these things are different and they're and they're made differently different um, and uh, yeah, does does the product have uh, notes of the basic ingredient? Does it have typicity? When you're making a vodka, do you think it's a good thing that your vodka tastes a bit like its base ingredient and carries some of that character? Yeah, probably. A lot of vodkas will just distill, strip out flavour, and not worry about retaining that kind of base character of your base ingredient. It is vodka, so the differences are. I guess less pronounced than if we were uh, doing a tasting of different styles of Scotch whiskey, for example. This one's amazing! <laughs> oh, it's like, I can, I, it actually sings to me. I think, I, I think, it, I think it's actually singing. It smells like unicorn's tears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it smells like strawberries, actually. A little leprechaun fart spritz. Um, okay, obviously, I think we might have guessed which one this is, uh, but. Do you recognise that there's something a bit more going on on the nose there? Mm. And obviously this is no trickery or jewelry pokery. There's a breadiness maybe, mm. and maybe a little bit of uh, vanilla. Mm. Talking about typicity, this mm -hmm. is made from winter wheat. So if we're getting a kind of bready character, I think that I think we're we're in the right territory there. The other thing that I think is very relevant here is uh, mouthfeel, texture in the palate. Mystery vodka number three. Has um has a uh, has has a real kind of like texture and mouthfeel. It really does have great typicity. Uh, this is the first one that will be launched in April. It will be in ten cities in America, London, and Stockholm, and here. It's no. only on trade. It's only available two bars. This has no actual citrus in it. Really? No. no. This product has no citrus in it. Lemon thyme, lemon myrtle, and lemon. It's the first absolute to ever have any colour, and it's the first absolute to ever have any added sugar. We won't be making a profit on this. It will be sold at, at a loss. This is this is pure marketing. This is us doing something for the um, for the bartender community, saying you know, we we want to give you products, flavour vodkas that, that actually excite you. There was a lot of buzz around it at Tails. It was yeah, it went down really well. Is it still vodka? It is still vodka. Is it? Yeah. Or is it a bit of botanical spirit? This is, this is made with absolute. But, but what's it's made with fine spirit. What's the botanical spirit? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's that, yeah, and and, and that, yeah. the drinks that are made with it are actually 
a, f a f phenomenal. Yeah, there's some really good drinks. This one, there's a Cosmo we did with this with Lille uh, and uh, raspberries, which is awesome. That absolute was the bartenders. Yeah. If they want to reach a vodka, that was the one they trusted and, and they knew where they stood and I felt like they had kind of a, a connection with. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'd like that to be the case again. And, we, and we've, we've got great quality products. I, I, I mean, hopefully you've seen the care and attention that goes into production down in this part of the world. Uh, and it's 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 a, it's a great solid vodka that that does what vodka is supposed to do, and and we just like to remind people that.